Good day, everyone, and welcome to Technical Drawing Class with Lady FM. So today we'll be looking at trochoid. Trochoid is the locus of a point traced along the circumference of a circle as it rolls along a straight line without slipping. You'll be wondering, where is trochoid? Where is cycloid? Do they belong to the same family? Yes, trochoid is a member of, cycloid is a member of the trochoid family. They have a big family in which you have the cycloid, the hypocycloid, the epicycloid, trochoid, and its types. So what are the types of trochoid that we have? We have inferior trochoid and superior trochoid. They are all, they all belong to the same member of the family. So now when we talk about inferior trochoid, what do we mean? Inferior trochoid is when the, the circle is inside another circle and it rolls along a straight line without slipping. While superior trochoid is when the circle is outside another circle and it rolls along a straight line without slipping. So a trochoid is now the locus generated by the along the circumference of the circle as the circle rolls along a straight line, be it inside or outside. So if it is inside, it is called inferior trochoid. And if it is outside, it is called superior trochoid. Quickly, let's see an example of how to draw or construct an inferior trochoid. The question, draw an inferior trochoid with point P, 5 mm inside another circle of diameter 60 mm, which rolls on a straight line without slipping. Please take note of the word point P, 5 mm inside. The word inside means it's inferior. Take your initial position from the bottom or the base. So the first procedure is to draw a circle with the given radius. The given radius is radius 30 mm, which is equivalent to diameter 60. So to draw your circle, you take your radius 30 mm and draw the circle. Then you also draw a tangential line that is equivalent to the circumference of the circle. The second procedure is to locate a point P from the question. Look, you have to locate a point P 5 mm away from the circumference of the circle. How do you get that? From the given radius, which is 30 mm, deduct 5 mm. So you have what? 30 minus 5, you have 25 mm. Using radius 25 mm, center at the, 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 the center of the circle, draw, using radius 25, draw the internal circle. Using radius 25 mm, draw the internal circle. Then the next procedure is to divide the internal circle into 12 or eight equal parts. When you divide into 12, you have more points to connect to it in order to get the smooth curve. So now you divide the internal circle into eight parts. The next procedure is to draw horizontal lines along the divisions. Each of the divisions, you project horizontal line from zero, from one, two, three, four, knowing fully well that three and five goes together, two and six goes together, seven and one goes together. So you draw horizontal line using your T square. Then the next thing is to mark off equal division, eight equal division. If you divide your circle into eight, you mark off 12, uh, sorry, eight equal divisions. But if you divide your circle into 12, you mark off 12 equal divisions along the tangential line. This is the tangential line. So you mark it along the tangential line. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the next thing, after you have divided um, your division into eight equal parts, you erect perpendicular lines at each of the divisions. Erect perpendicular lines at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, using your set square. After you have done that, center at C1. After you have erected your perpendicular lines, you label each of these, each of those points as C1, C2, C3, up to C8. Now this middle line 
that is labeled C1 to C8 is called the locus of the center of the generating circle. That is the name of the middle line. Now, for us to get the point for the locus, center at C1 using the radius of the internal circle, which is 25 mm, strike an arc on line one because you are on C1. When you get to C2, you strike an arc on line two. When you get to C3, you strike an arc on line three. C4, strike an arc on line four. When you get to C5, you turn to your right hand side and you strike an arc on line five. Get to C6, strike an arc on line six. When you get to C7, strike an arc on line seven. When you get to C8, which is the last one, you strike an arc on line eight. Then the next thing is just for you to join the points together in order for you to have a smooth curve. So this is how far we can go for today. In my next video, I'll teach you how to construct or draw a superior trochoid.